Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to Best Few Plays of the Week. In this episode we have a defender with impeccable timing, a crucial contribution from the pride of Sweden and an old T14 coming out to play. Let's go! Let's begin with a scout game from the EU servers. Benji 16 EBC plays an aggressive mobile scout giving the T49 a good workout on steps. Here we go, the T49 sprints down the middle, backing away just in time when the commander's sixth sense tingles. Benji waits just long enough to disappear and picks off a scout with the 152mm howitzer, then spends some time pretending to be a bush, maybe hiding a bone or <clears throat> something else. But at least there's spotting damage. However, there's one quick counter to players sitting in bushes, and that's going around them and invading the base. Our scout responds and gets slapped. Ouch! I wonder, is there anyone in that bush? Yep, but not anymore. Benji gets spotted by a rival T49, but manages to dodge the shot that follows. Hello, Artie! Like a dog finding a bone, Benji pounces and claims it for themselves. The rival T49 tries to start something again, but teammates drive it off and destroy it. A thinly armored TVP shows its side, so Benji gives in to the temptation and clicks. Another Skoda seems to be engaging the defenders at home base. Benji lines a shot straight up its tailpipe and pulls the trigger. That really burns! There's a minor traffic collision with a bat chap, but it's all good, and the Skoda gives up the ghost. Shortly after, an unseen enemy pushes the bat and Benji. Our scout heads out to challenge an AMX-5120, but before it can really start, a bullseye from Artie takes care of it. An SVG is spotted in the distance. Benji knows this shot will be a challenge for the derp gun, but it goes for it anyway. A hit! Not good enough for the kill, however, but a hit is a hit! A fast leopard manages to evade the first shot, but Benji adjusts and gets it on the second try. What time is it? It's Artie hunting time! It's not a good idea to let artillery see you coming, so Benji backs off, waits a bit to disappear, and heads in at high speed. Oops, I bet missing wasn't part of the plan. Uh, I wonder how fast the reverse gear is on this thing anyway. Seems fast enough to get out of the way. This time, the gunner remembers to aim. The last SVG is right ahead, and it can't even try to fight back as friendly artillery has already tracked it. Boom! That makes Top Gun end the game as the last tank disappears before Benji can get anywhere close. Let's take a look at the scorecard for our fighting scout. A Pascucci medal for arty hunting, 10k combined damage, and a Top Gun medal. Solid work all around, Benji! And speaking of Top Gun, next up is Cavaliers 24 from the American region. The Battle Chariot is a futuristic looking T14 which gets to show its power at an encounter at Lakeville. This long-since-retired premium vehicle is an odd beast. The hull armor is sloped all around, almost like that of an IS-6, and gives decent protection. However, the gun is inherited from the M3 Lee, so is completely inadequate for a Tier 5 heavy. The first target is soft and squishy, as is the second one. So far, the bad gun is not a problem. The Type 95 is supposed to be a heavy, but it's almost unarmored, so another suitable target. And this tank destroyer showing its butt is basically a freebie. I wonder why everyone keeps ignoring Cavaliers. This is like shooting fish in a barrel. An artillery shell bounces off the tracks? That's something you don't see every day. Hmm, it kind of looks like the rest of the team isn't having such a good day. Then again, that's not really a concern for a top gun. The gun is hilariously inaccurate at this distance, being useless at helping the last teammate. It's one against seven then, so be it. Let's see what this baby can do. Some people are attempting to capture, but Cavaliers doesn't care. It's killing time. Well, that was embarrassing. Let's try again. That's more like it. Scratch two. Just when I started to think that the armor is indestructible, it fails. This is getting dangerous for Cavaliers. New plan. First, that TD needs to go. And then the DW2. We've been saying how bad the gun is on the T14, but it's nothing compared to the DWs. There are three, I mean two more to go, and the capture siren has fallen silent. A tier five tank destroyer is a deadly threat, but our top gun will not be stopped. The T14 is actually pretty mobile, and tactical driving carries the day. 
That just leaves the poor little SPG, which seems to still be firing AP. The new RT mode can't arrive faster, eh? Cavaliers could win with a capture, but that's not the Top Gun way. Let's go find that RT. And there it is. The inaccurate gun refuses to cooperate, but ending the game with a ram is cooler anyway. Early on, it was more of an action comedy than an epic Top Gun display, but things got more serious later on. Either way, that's 13 kills with a tank that few would consider particularly powerful. This episode's invader is Predator Hank, also from the American region. The battle is fought on Tundra, with Hank in command of a mid-tier constructor T-34-100. Things do not start well. Our invader trades a hit or two in return and puts a shell through the back of their friendly VK's turrets. Trading fire from here is dangerous and not that effective. Finally, a decent target. Red team tanks dash across the gap in the east, giving Hank a good opportunity to dish out some damage. A T-29 gets disabled in the open and becomes the first kill. It lands a shot in return, however, leaving the T-34 with 100 hit points. Hank takes her Cromwell to death's door, turns around and blows up an SU-100Y. There are several low HP targets on offer, so Hank takes the opportunity to even out the score a bit. This Cheeto is in excellent repair, with three accurate shots turned into smoking wreckage. Jackson is down to its last hit point, and an HE round finishes it off with ease. We are down to five shells and three opponents. Hank considers taking on the Patriot, but backs away after taking a closer look. The Chaffee's turret is briefly visible, and our invader takes the shot. Nice! Patriot is chasing the last friendly. Hank goes in to help the FCM, but is forced to back off in the face of a T-28 prototype. There goes the FCM, but the Patriot goes down to 18 hit points as well. Last shell. This has to work. Yes! Good work, but the Constructor's weapon is now dry. Capping is the only way to win this. If the prototype comes knocking, Hank will have to keep it at bay using harsh language. But who are we kidding? The T-28 prototype is notoriously slow. Our T-34-100 stays in cover, and there's nothing the frustrated TD driver can do about it. It looks like even invaders want to play as top guns these days, only capping if they run out of shells. Still, it was a good game, and Predator Hank sure made up for that disastrous start. From invader to defender, this one is a Winter Himmelsdorf encounter from the Asian region. OK, Tank U's tank is the toughest nails E75. It's about to be put to the test, since the red team has a big advantage in heavy tanks. The game kicks off, and OK Tank U heads for the banana. Usually, this is difficult to hold on your own, but against a lone T29, it's more like easy mode. A uh, T95, on the other hand, is much more of a challenge. Luckily, the heavily armored beastie focuses on somebody else, allowing our defender to take it out fairly easily. The T-29 isn't much of a threat on its own, so OK Tank U drives up to it and punches its clock. Defender senses tingle, and the E-75 turns around as a red tide washes down from the hill. The RT is doomed, but revenge is swift. A Liberty deals some damage, but gets wrecked in return. A brave Indian charges in, but seems a little confused over which one is the 85-ton heavy. The IS seems to be firing HE, making the Liberty in the rear the bigger threat. The commander can't handle the HE bombardment, however, literally going to pieces under the pressure. Luckily, somebody else takes care of the French heavy, leaving OK Tank U free to finish off the IS. There's a lot of crossfire here, and no real chance to fight back. Our defender falls back as the symbol for the last teammate winks out. The end game is one against four. Somebody patch up the commander! There's work to do! An RU-251 dashes across the street. Fast, but not fast enough. Another scout challenges to E-75 from behind and receives the same treatment. Just you wait, T-49. You'll get what's coming to you. It's time to get rid of these pesky little things. I mean, tough as it is, the tank can't take much more of this. Finally, that leaves two. Our defender has to get to the circle, but the T-49 is no doubt waiting for an opportunity to pounce. Time is running out. Defend or lose the game. OK Tank U traverses the turret all the way around and picks off the charging light tank. Nice! The reset has to happen on the first try, so our defender reloads with an APCR shell. Here goes! Boom! Not just a reset, but the game-ending shot. 
Now, technically, that was just a single defense shot, but the previous three kills opened the way to get to the capper. Well played, okay, thank you, and with excellent timing. A finale also comes from the Asian region as Madhouse 10101 delivers a crucial contribution in a Thrissvagen 103B. The map is Karelia, which is about as close to Sweden as we can get in the game. Madhouse is off to a strong start, putting the smackdown on several red team machines and claiming the first kill. Those fast reverse gears come in handy as the Thrissvagen repositions to continue the fight. An IS-7 takes a lot of killing, but Madhouse keeps chipping away until it gives up the ghost. A black dog comes into view and receives a few love taps. It looks like the northern flank is in trouble. Madhouse moves into our support position and gets busy. The targets move into cover, but there's a T-69 in need of killing on the other flank. Anyway, the T-57 should be able to finish the fight on its own now. The Seeswagen settles in to wait, but when the opposition appears, they are much closer than expected. Alarmingly close, in fact. Madhouse drops the nose down and fires as fast as the gun can cycle. Amazingly, the armor almost holds, and it's the opposition who gets torn into pieces. It's three versus three. Let's wrap it up, team. Just, uh, give me a moment. There we go, two versus two. Hunting down the Scorpion G won't be easy. The SPG, on the other hand, could be hiding back at their base. Damn, there goes the artillery support. And the enemy RT isn't here. I guess it's time to attempt to capture them. Watch out for the Scorpion. Madhouse charges, somewhat hampered by the fact that the Stutzwagen can't really aim in this mode. Still, it goes pretty well, until an artillery shell comes close to turning the Swedish TD into an IKEA flatback. In the end, our hero is victorious. Two minutes should be enough to finish this. The only problem is that the 103 can't take even the slightest bit of damage anymore. Two seconds can be a long time. The SVG is hurt, but still very much alive. Madhouse floors the accelerator and closes the distance. A falling tree reveals the foe's position, and it's time for the two second delay once again. Okay, fire! And the game is over. Excellent! It's nice that our first game with the S-Tank shows it at its best, as well as demonstrating the weaknesses of that unique design. Well played and well carried, Madhouse 10101. That's it for this episode. We look forward to seeing more of you guys and girls at your best next week. I'm Luke Nella, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.